In this video, we're going to talk about how to check the constant error variance assumption that's frequently made when building linear regression models. The constant error variance assumption essentially means that when you look at the amount of deviation that the errors have from the true regression model, that that deviation should follow a constant thickness or have a constant amount of deviation for every single error that we have in our regression model. Since we don't observe the errors in a regression model, we have to use the properties of the residuals to assess whether the error assumptions are actually reasonable. And if we want to check this constant error variance assumption, the most frequent way that people do this is using the residual plots similar to what we used in the mean zero error assumption video uh, you hopefully previously watched. So what we're going to do to check the constant error variance assumption is we're going to construct a plot of the residuals versus the fitted values, or a plot of the residuals versus a set of regressor values for a particular regressor. And if this assumption is satisfied, then the spread of the residuals should be constant as we move from left to right along the x-axis of the plot. And I should note that this check essentially assumes that the errors are uncorrelated, so you expect to see a random scatter of points. If your errors are correlated, then this might not be the case. On the other hand, if the constant error variance assumption is violated, when we look at our residual plots, we expect to see a systematic varying spread of the residuals. In other words, the spread of the residuals is not going to be constant as we move along the x-axis from left to right. So let's actually look at a couple of plots to show you what you might expect uh, to see in, in the residual plots. So ideally, what we would like to see if the error assumption is satisfied is we want the residual plot to be a null plot. So similar to what we had, when we were checking the mean zero error assumption, we have our plot of residuals versus fitted values. We have a horizontal reference line at zero. And this plot should be a random scatter with constant thickness as we move from left to right along our x-axis. So it would be wonderful if we saw a plot that looked like this when we constructed a residual plot for our fitted model. This would be an excellent uh, and, uh, this would be an example of a plot where there's no evidence that the constant variance assumption is violated. However, it's very common that you see a residual plot that looks something like a horn or a wedge. So in this case, I have my residuals, I have my fitted values, I have my reference line at zero, and a wedge occurs when the spread of the residuals increases as I move from left to right, as I move from left to right along the x-axis here. Okay, so it looks like a wedge, which is why it's called a wedge plot, and a horn would do exactly the opposite. So a horn or a funnel would be a situation where the spread of the residuals was decreasing as I moved from left to right along the x-axis. In either case, what we see is a systematic departure from constant thickness as we move from left to right along the x-axis. There is one caveat though I want to indicate as we're looking at these plots. So many times when you're looking at residual plots, the various assumptions are intertwined as you're trying to check the plot. And so you don't you have to be careful when you're looking at your residual plot because you could see a plot that looks something something like this. Sorry about those lines, which are meant to be dots. Let's see if I can do a better job here. So if we have a reference line at zero here, um, it's very clear that we have, a, a, we have some curvature in our residuals. And if you naively looked at this residual plot, you might conclude that in fact, there is a problem with non-constant variance because the thickness of the residuals here um, does not match, I mean, it basically it's not constant as we move along the x-axis. So if you started over here and then you moved your fingers along like this, you can see that the residuals deviate outside of that line. And that would be a problem. However, what we actually notice is that we, we have really what we have a problem, we have a problem with non, uh, with a nonlinear structure. 
If I look at the spread of the residuals after accounting for that nonlinear structure, the spread of the residuals is actually pretty constant moving from left to right. And so in this situation, if I saw a plot like this, it wouldn't indicate that there was a problem with non-constant area variance. It would actually indicate a problem with nonlinear structure. So in other words, the mean zero error assumption would be violated or there's a problem with the structure of our model. Uh, and there's not necessarily a problem with non-constant error variance. So we do have to be careful when we are trying to interpret our residual plots when checking the constant error variance assumption. So what can you do if your constant error variance assumption is violated, but assuming that the residuals are approximately uncorrelated? Well, there's actually another kind of regression that people sometimes use called weighted least squares regression. And what it attempts to do is it tries to account for the fact that the errors, or in this case the residuals, uh, have different amounts of variability associated with them. Uh, and as long as the errors are uncorrelated, that would be a great solution to improve the fit of your model. Another option is to transform your response or your predictors. Uh, most frequently, you take a square root or a log transformation of your response if you see increasing amounts of variability as you move from left to right along the x-axis of your residual plot. And frequently, that can correct the, the problem, and the transformed response will have constant variance, or at least approximately constant variance, when we look at our residual plots. And we will see an example of that here shortly. I did want to mention one other additional plot, though, that we haven't talked about so far. And some people like looking at a plot of the square root of the absolute value of your residuals versus your fitted values. And the idea is that essentially what you're doing is you are folding your residual plot in half. It's not quite that simple, but it's the basic idea. And so you're effectively doubling the resolution of your residual plot for detecting non-constant variants. You have to be very careful, though, when you use this, because if there is a nonlinear pattern in your residuals, then this plot uh, may be completely useless and it may not tell you the information that you need that you want to know. So you have to make sure that there's no nonlinear patterns, but assuming there are no nonlinear patterns among your residuals, then this plot can be another tool that you can use to assess whether the non-constant error variance assumption is satisfied. And essentially what you're, you're doing here is similar to the, the residual plot. You want the this plot of the square root of the absolute residuals to have constant thickness as you move from left to right along your x-axis. And so we can use the same R functions we used in the previous video to construct residual plots to check the non-constant area variance assumption. And additionally, we can construct a plot of the square root of the absolute value of the residuals versus the fitted values. And the way that we would do that, or we can, we can easily construct that, is uh, after we fit a model and stored it in this object lmod, we use the plot function on lmod and we specify which equals three. And which equals three tells R to produce the scatter plot that has the square root of the absolute residuals versus the fitted values. So we're gonna go back to our savings data and we want to once again assess whether the constant error variance assumption is satisfied, or at least reasonable. We can't verify that the assumption is satisfied, but we can see whether there's a clear indication that it's violated. So this is a plot of the square root of the absolute residuals, of the standardized residuals, in fact. Um, so let's go back previously in our slides and look at some of the plots that we constructed in the previous video. Okay, so here's the, the regular old residual plot where we're looking at a plot of the residuals versus the fitted values for the savings data. And what we're looking for is clear deviations from constant thickness. And so as I move from left to right along the x-axis, so I kind of start here and I move along like this, and there's maybe a little bit of less variability here and here, but it's not a clear, obvious deviation from constant thickness. And so just looking at this residual plot, it's not obvious that the constant error variance assumption is violated. So we don't have any major indicators of a problem yet. If I looked at residual plots comparing the residuals to each one of my predictors, I want to see if there's a problem there. Um, these plots look for actually fairly similar for the most part to the previous one. So I don't see any obvious examples of a problem because the thickness of the residuals as you move from left to right is approximately constant. The one potential exception is right here. So when I look at this plot and I look at the residuals for younger countries, 
which have larger percentages of young people, versus somewhat older countries, which have lower percentages of young people, I do actually wonder whether the spread of the residuals is the same in those two groups. There, there kind of appears to be a difference to me. And so it's not so obvious that I would definitely say there's a constant air variance problem or that this assumption is definitely violated, but it's at least suggestive. It makes me think that maybe there is an issue with non-constant variance that's not completely obvious when we only look at one plot. So that's definitely something to be watchful for. And if we scroll back down in our slides here, we can now look at a plot of the square root of the absolute standardized residuals versus the fitted values. And just by way of reminder, the standardized residual is simply a residual that has been scaled in such a way that it's supposed to have constant variance. And in this plot, similar to the other residual plots, we want to see essentially constant thickness as we move from left to right along the x-axis. Because we took the absolute value of those standardized residuals, the lower bound is zero. And as I look at this plot, I don't see any clear indications of non-constant variance. So this is relatively constant variance. There maybe are a couple of, of outliers here, but that's not something that I would really worry about just from looking at this particular plot. So I mentioned previously that take, making a transformation of your response variable can be very helpful in dealing with a violation of the non-constant error variance assumption. So just to provide an example of this, um, I fit a, fit a quick model uh, before and after transformation using the GALA data set in the fairway package. So if you look in the fairway package, there's a GALA data set. And so I loaded that data set and I fit a model that regressed species on the variables area, adjacent, elevation, S cruise, and nearest. And then I also fit a similar model, but instead of using the original species variable, I regressed the square root of species on the same predictor as the previous model. And then for those two models, I constructed a plot of the residuals versus the fitted values. And if we look at those plots, when we look at this plot right here, we see a pretty obvious problem with non-constant variance. We see a, a wedge shape. So as the fitted values increase, the variability of the residuals also increase. So we have a clear indication of that the constant error variance assumption is violated. On the other hand, when I look at the transformed data, the residuals from the transformed data, this actually looks fantastic. And so we see pretty much constant thickness as we move from left to right along the x-axis. And so after transforming our response with the square root transformation, the constant error variance assumption is at least appears to be reasonable uh, for the transformed data. And so if you're gonna proceed forward uh, with analysis uh, on this data set, you'd probably wanna proceed forward with a, the transformed response.